Good morning, everyone, and welcome to MPU Live. I'm Carrie Rodriguez. And I'm Tim Langan. This is going to be such an exciting morning. That's right. I am so excited. We are having a family meeting of the National Parents Union, and we are going to be spreading joy across this nation, as we do every morning. So we do. But uh, with all of our friends and family with us, I, I can't wait. To it's going to be a hoot nanny. It is going to be something else. We are going to be joined by Christina Laster in California, Maritza Gertie in Pennsylvania, Nehemiah Frank in Oklahoma, Steve Hill in California, Wendy Gonzalez Neal in Texas, Bernita Bradley in Michigan, and Vivette Dukes in New York. Ah! Plus, Natasha Maggie Madry holding it down right here. That's right. In Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, we are going to be having some fun uh, bringing you into our circle of love and solidarity here this morning to show you a little bit about what the National Parents Union is all about and how we do this thing uh, in the hopes that you'll want to come along with us. So That's right. I'm excited to see all of my family because we really are a family. We're going to yeah. talk about that this morning. That's right. Makes the National big, Parents big Union. Love. What's, what's the special sauce here? Well, we're, we're going to let you in. It's big love so, pot pie. That's like, oh, well, okay, well. Let's, let's not go too far. Just saying. Oh, my goodness. Just saying. Uh, but Sorry. before we do any of that, and I, I can't wait to get started. We want to start you off with news and information as we do every morning. Uh, we've got some actual positive news this morning about the unemployment rate, but let's start start off with where we are with COVID. Uh, COVID, uh, 1.91 million cases. And unfortunately, another increase again of 1,000 uh, 1, more dense to 110,000. I believe that's about 10,000 10, in the last week. Again, you know, I, I think it's kind of funny. We talked about this uh, the, yesterday morning. I'm going to say it again. Um, some folks saying that, you know, the, the uprising, the protests that have been happening in the past couple of days now uh, leading to the spike in COVID-19. Uh, no, sorry, honey. The, the, that would be as a result of all of the idiots going to the state houses with their AK-47s demanding we reopen. Uh, you're not going to pin this one on black and brown nope. community. Sorry about that. Nope. It takes two weeks for incubation to happen. Uh, and frankly, uh, a right and justice cause having to go out into the streets, right. uh, it's, it's necessary. It had to happen. Uh, it's unfortunate that it is happening in this circumstance, but um, folks marching for their lives in the street. If you don't want black and brown people protesting the streets, stop killing black, black and, brown and brown people, people in the streets. Yeah. So don't start none, won't be none. But unfortunately, we have a 400 year history um, that continues to uh, yep. to go on in our society. We'll be talking much more about that. But A, a uh, as we bring this back to COVID-19, um, what we're seeing right now, some of the spikes in new cases and whatnot, um, as a result of people actually not showing up uh, to their reopen the state's rallies with uh, masks on. Yeah. Because we do see a lot of the protesters in, in right. what's happening in the streets now wearing those masks. Um, but also uh, folks going out to the beach saying, hey, nothing to see here. Going There's out to the beach. throngs of yeah. people out at the beach and in the park. Yeah. Um, I'd also, too, businesses reopening mm -hmm. states. Um, I was watching a video today of Vegas reopening. And I am no expert. I, I love seeing that unemployment has dropped. Uh, 13 to 13 percent um, as states have reopened. Um, but uh, again, I am not pro reopening right now. <laughs> and when I watched this video of Las Vegas opening, I did not see any social distancing uh, whatsoever. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if that causes an increase in cases as well. And we'll lots of money. To, well, we will have to see what happens. Because those uh, casinos will get you. They will. And I mean, I got you always win. You do okay. Yeah. Oh, you I, do okay. I don't, I don't do so. I'm a lucky person. Anyway, uh, last thing in the news, we do want to talk about the unemployment rate. We thought it would hit about 20%, but with some of the reopenings, we're at about 13.3%. Yep. yep. Um, very, very interesting to see how this is all going to play yep. out with the reopening, because if we have to reopen and then close and then... Oh, Lord knows we are on the roller coaster. We are on the ride right now. So hang on tight. And yep. uh, that is why this program exists. This organization exists so that we can get through these situations together. That's right. uh, we're going to figure it out. And that's why this morning family meeting is going to happen. That's right. Uh, but before we get to that, we do want to mention a lot of exciting shows uh, coming up 
next week, a lot of folks who are going to continue with this broadcast every morning at 10 a.m., uh, bringing you news information at Solidarity every day at noontime. We bring it to you in Espanol so that we can bring the same information and much more to our Spanish-speaking audiences. At two o'clock, it's Christina Laster, who I'm excited That's to right. actually be joining us on this show. That's right. Tomorrow. We haven't had her on this show. No. Uh, I'm excited for that. Um, and then, of course, you dad to dad, an incredible 4 p.m. on Thursdays. Incredible show yesterday. If you haven't had a chance to see it, see it next week. Bernita's show coming up. She's going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. The vet, speak your truth. Uh, that was on last night. An incredible moment great. for her to be sharing her heart and her perspective. She does with so well. Experts today. We're going to talk to her about that, but all of that in store for you next week. But now, Without further ado, it's going to take us a minute. We have so many guests at one time. It's going to take Danny a minute to load them all up, but I'm excited. Let's, 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 all, let's uh, all roll them out of the truck here. Thrilled to be joined by our friend Christina Laster, who hosts, man who hosts Managing Day to Day every day on NPU. Christina, good morning to you. Maritza Gertie coming to us live from Philadelphia, holding us accountable for voting for participating in the census, getting on and representing Latino kids deserve education, not incarceration, live from Philly, joining us. Nehemiah Frank checking in from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is the publisher, the founder of the Black Wall Street Times. Uh, he is a national leader and it's just so incredible to have him with us this morning, uh, bringing all that gravitas and all that knowledge right there in your face, in the background. This book cases. Give him a hard time Jeez. about that spreading joy across this nation. Uh, Steve Hill uh, from San Diego, California. Uh, our friend, our, our, our guide, our former UN peacekeeper, keeping us centered, uh, teaching us how to organize. We love him, love having his spirit with us. Uh, Wendy Gonzalez-Neal from Houston, Texas. Also on board this morning, we had her yesterday bringing her incredible story of, of her experience and how she bringing that to her community uh, through her organization as a part of the National, Council, uh, the National Parents Council as well. Renita Bradley from Detroit, Michigan, our mama bear in the Midwest. Uh, she is speaking truth, bringing some really power, a powerful yep. poem last night to our that was council. Beautiful. I want to talk to her more about that too. And the Vet Dukes, live from New York, coming to us, bringing her incredible perspective, uh, holding it down for her family and, and send our love to John, the brand new college graduate. That's right, John congratulations, Dukes, that's awesome. Uh, with us in spirit, I'm sure he's, he's hard at work right now. So look at this beautiful family. Everybody, we need you to unmute, say good morning to, to the millions watching us uh, across the country this morning. Welcome family, we are so glad to see you. And don't forget about the good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hey, 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 Natasha. And we morning, got Natasha is a little shy. Yeah. Natasha's like, Natasha, you know, folks don't know that she is the, actually the executive producer of all of the National Parents Union programming. That's right. She is on every single show. She is making sure it gets on the air. She is holding it down for Massachusetts Parents United. She's in the office right now. That's right. Social distancing. She's the only one in our offices. But look at that beautiful purple. Thank you, Natasha. Love you, Natasha. I'm even joining us, Dan, Natasha. You're part of the party today. That's right. Her, Thank her you for party. having me. I love all of you guys, too. Yeah. So I got I to gotta say. This brings me incredible joy to see all of these beautiful faces this morning. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really excited that we're doing this because, you know, we've, we've talked a bit uh, on the morning broadcast about every Thursday night, we kind of come together and, and we share with one another. It's a business meeting where we're talking about making decisions about the union and what we're working on and what our campaigns are. And we're going to talk a bit about that, but it is a place for us to share. Um, and, to, and to have a safe space. It's kind of the, the next step of what we started in New Orleans, you know, keeping that vibe alive. And, you know, I want to I wanna start with Bernita. Last night, she started us off uh, with our meeting of the National Parents That's Council, right. our, our governing body of the National Parents Union. Really powerful poem she read yesterday. But Bernita, uh, I want to I wanna throw it to you first and foremost so that you can, you can tell folks uh, from your perspective, what is the National Parents Union all about? What is this vibe? What have we created? How do you see it from your perspective? Yes. Yeah, so, um, oh, uh, so 
for me, what the National Parents Union is, it is proof that not only do parents own this work of changing policies, procedures, and changing the lives of children around education, and even now, like, uh, well, always civil rights, right? Because education is a part of that civil rights, right? But um, it is proof that parents deserve to do this work. Parents deserve to do it with fidelity. Our voices matter and we should be in every place, every space, every room that makes any type of decisions around about our children. And um, that's, for, that's, I think that it's landmark to see that there's a parent union because we, we, we've always backed teachers and we've backed educators and we've stood on, on Capitol stairs for, you know, to make sure this happens for people. But knowing that we now have a badass group of parents who are willing to show up, be there and rally with you in any state you go to, that is like premier, that's, that's phenomenal. So it does like this super hug across the country of parents to me. And it's parents who are willing to show up and be together in unity and agree on something, right? Because they say after all that we're just, we're just parent teachers. No, we are parent leaders. We are champions. We're gonna get it done and we're gonna bring it to you if you are not willing to get it done. So Bernita, we're, we're le leaving it to you to launch the next question of, of your next brother or sister. You wanna jump into this conversation. You know, that we lead collectively this is a collaborative effort. So you're up next. Who are you pitching it to? Oh, oh, I have to say Nehemiah. I have to say Nehemiah um, because <laughs> my black brother is on here representing for the brothers. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to ask Nehemiah down there, you know, doing all this work, how does it feel being a black man? And who, who? How does it feel being a black man in this environment right now and knowing that you are on this side with the support and the backing that you have? And then what would you say to the people who don't back you? Oh my goodness. Um, well, as Carrie had said earlier, uh, this, is, this is a safe space. NPU is a safe space and I am so blessed to be able to have found people across the country that are as passionate about education and making sure families have say in what happens to their kids. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this group. So in this safe space, this is my refuge. The one hour or two hours a week that we actually have a collective group meeting, um, it's fuel for me. It really is. I feel like my cup gets, gets more full more, more filled up whenever we have those meetings. And so I, I go back out on Friday mornings and I, I start running it out and then I get it filled back up that next Thursday. And so that's what I have to say about my immediate safe space with NPU. Um, and I encourage others to join NPU as well. Um, but outside of this safe space is the reality of being a black man in America. And that reality is heavy. It is stressful, nearly 24 hours a day. Um, I go to bed stressed out. I wake up stressed. And, you know, it, it, it's not always like that. But recently, I have been stressed out every single day for every hour. Uh, earlier this week, we had a a victory in our community. We were able to uh, get the mayor to end live PD, which is traumatic. It's um, trauma porn for for America, mm -hmm. and it's unhealthy for us. We have to. We can't demonize people at their lowest points. They're human beings. Yes. And so I am. I I'm really happy that happened. But within the next few hours. There were other things that took place in this country. The president did something or, you know, a politician said something that fanned the flames of racial hatred in this nation. And so it's a constant 24 hour battle to to just breathe normally, really. And so I'm thankful to, to MPU for, for having for creating my safe space. 
Nehemiah, pitch it to the next friend here. <clears throat> It's like an early morning game of popcorn. It is I popcorn. It. I will pitch it to Wendy. <laughs> I, um, you know, when I was actually asked by Carrie to join MPU, I didn't know what that meant or what it, um, what it was going to mean in the future. But when we had our gathering in New Orleans, you know, I started crying because I realized that I'm not alone as a, as a parent. Um, there are several of us around, you know, our nation that are dealing with the same issues, but in different cities and different states. You know, um, and it was something I encourage everybody to join NPU because we have a voice, you know, now we're backed by parents or not just the, you know, the parents itself, you know, leaders here that believe that parents do have a voice and it's not just mamas, it's daddies too. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, grandmothers, it's the guardians, it's all of us here together that we're united together, no matter what color of skin we have, we're all in here in this fight together, especially, you know, here in Houston, you know, we, it, it was actually, I felt like a blessing when we had our protest here, knowing the fear all of us had whether how our protest was gonna happen here. But I have to say, I was very proud of our Houstonians to show, you know, the world like, hey, we can have a nonviolent protest especially the George Floyd family, encouraging others and marching along with the protesters as well as our Houston mayor and, and so forth. But these are the things that we celebrate, these, you know, things that we do and how we do this for our kids. You know, during the protest, I was seeing kids, you know, in the protest itself. And it was, it was great to see all of that so kids can learn and Yes, it was a violent act that happened, but something positive came out where we are going to see change. And this group here is going to make sure that change happens, not just in the classroom, but for all of our kids. And that's why it's an honor to be here and part and be part of this group. When we meet on Thursday, you know, I'm just, it's a ray of sunshine. It just brings joy, more joy to my heart when we come together, especially when the dark times hit us we're here for each other. You know, we're here to back each other. You're not alone. You know, what can we do to help? And that's what I love about MPU. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to choose Maritza. Do it. Maritza. <laughs> um, hello from Philadelphia, everybody. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of this amazing group of individuals who continue on a daily basis to inspire me and others to affect change. Um, I, I especially appreciate, truly appreciate that it's also being done in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, too many times I've been a part of meetings where parents come, they want to know what's going on and no one gave them the respect of making sure they understood it in their language. Mm. Mm. Um, I appreciate those organizations, those schools that have realized this and have made the investment of making sure that whatever is being said in English is also understood in Spanish and all the other languages that are needed according to the population of the children in the school. So we've got to continue this work. We have to continue to encourage our families that no matter where you live, no matter the color of your skin, no matter your economic status, no matter your zip code, all of our children have a right to receive equitable education. Amen. And we have to be there for them. I'll be your voice. We will all be your voice if you cannot speak. Not everybody can go to a meeting at five o'clock or six o'clock. Not everybody can go to a 10 a.m. meeting. And a lot of people that are in place, positions of making these big decisions do not respect that. 
that our families have to work, have to be out there to support their households. So we are now there to be a voice for them. And I thank you guys for letting me be a part of this. I am going to pitch this to Steve. All right, thank you. Thank you, Maritza. And um, thanks to everybody on here. I, I guess first off, I'd like to say it's just, uh, it's really a real blessing to have um, found this group. <clears throat> and uh, didn't find it, I, I, I really, I, I see she's come on and I really wanna send a special thank you to my sister, Marisol, um, who reached out to me and she knows some of the struggles I've been through and she's connecting, she connected me with this organization and another organization that I'm with, Youth Empowerment here in San Diego. Um, when I think about uh, what this, this organization, National Parent Union, what that means for our country, I also think about what it means um, for the world. I've been blessed. I started working as an organizer in my community, in the Latino community, in the early 90s when, when the big issue we were dealing with uh, was, was violence. Um, and I think a lot of us that are old enough, we remember how it was in the 90s in the African-American and Latino community. We had rates of violence that were higher than many places in the world that were at war. And, and, and sadly, in some of our communities in this country, it still is that case. Um, it shifted, it's no longer some of the bigger cities. So people think it's gotten better. It's actually just become more invisible. It's hit a lot of the smaller communities, people where, where our people are being pushed out of cities and they're moving into cities where people don't see them that's where it's happening. Um, and to me, this, that, that's, that's, that's the strength of having, you know, parents involved because we can engage and, and it all starts with education. Um, I worked overseas. I went from working here local, locally in, in California in our communities to working with the UN overseas in countries that are coming out of warfare. And in, in the last so many years, um, I've had friends and colleagues from overseas reach out to me and say, hey, we need you there now. The struggle is in the US. They see what's happening in this country. In this last week, especially, they see what's going on. They see the displays on the state. You know, everybody saw what happened. There's marches going on all over the world for what happened to Brother George Floyd. And, and, and they're seeing that. They're seeing what happened with Ahmaud Arbery. People are learning about what we didn't see what happened to Breonna Taylor, but we heard it in the 911 call. Um, there's, we still need justice for her. Um, and people around the world are watching us right now. And, and what we, what we see with this organization is, is, is people coming together and holding, holding our governments, whether that's at the federal level, whether that's there at the local municipalities, that's a school district, that's a city council, that's a state, um, that's our role. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a parent, but I'm a deal. I'm an uncle. Um, and in our community, and much like in the African American community and the Islander community and Asian communities and a lot of white communities as well, being an uncle doesn't mean your blood either. <laughs> you know, I'm a play uncle to a lot of kids. So it was funny in the community, like hearing, hearing some, someone's, you know, one of your little nieces or nephew tell, telling their parent, is he like my real uncle or is he just like my, is he just like my, my pretend, my play deal, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't matter because that's how our community rolls. And when I think about this organization and I think what we're doing and what that means, not just for this country, but like I said, for, for people around the world that are watching us, I think that's the importance because we got to get back to family. If this country is going to be all that it could be, it needs to look like what we see right here on the screen right here. It's everybody. But you speak English, Spanish, um, Somali, Vietnamese, Tagalog, you know, whatever language you speak, we're all here. Um, and so I appreciate that. And I think that's the power of having a National Parents Union. So with that, um, I want to pass it to, I'm going to pass it to Natasha because she's sitting right there. She's been doing this and I think she got a lot to say. 
Hi, everybody. Yes, definitely. So when I went down to New Orleans for the convening, that was like the most like memorable, one of the most memorable experiences of my life. I just to see so many, <laughs> so many parents come out and really want to work together. It was the personal stories that really, really touched me. Uh, we all have a story to tell and you can't ever let anybody tell your story. You tell your own story. But at that moment, during those days in New Orleans, it was just amazing. Like I felt like I'd be like I gained like this whole new family. So now, it, like over the last couple of months, getting to know like the delegates, oh my God, these are amazing people right here. And some of them are not here, but you all are amazing. Like just to be able to connect with you, to be able to watch the shows, like you're bringing so much resources to our families and so many people need that. Like, I love that it's in Spanish as well. Um, and we're looking to expand. We wanna do more languages as well. Like this has just been like my community. So like, this is my family. This is not a job for me. This is definitely part of, like it's part of me. Um, so I'm a mom first and I never take that hat off. And I just really feel like, um, like I just love all of you guys so much. And I feel like the National Parents Union, like if you're looking to connect with a group of people, the National Parents Union is the place to be because if you're looking for like a connection to anybody, whatever your issues are, or just bonding together, like together we can do anything. And if you're looking for a group of people where you can bounce ideas off, this is that group. Uh, we all, you know, walk different lives. And um, it's just so like amazing to have, that network of people there. And I'm just like so blessed to be a part um, of this family. Like I love all of you guys and uh, all of your shows. You all bring so much to the table and um, just seeing people step out of their comfort zone where maybe they're just like, oh, I can't do a show, I don't know. And then you see them and they're just like amazing. And they just, just need a little push. And they just, and all of us have that in us. Like, and we have so much to bring to the world. So keep shining that light on our families because it's really needed. And I love all of you guys. Um, I'll kick it off to Marisol. Hi, everybody. Sorry that I'm late. Um, I think um, for me, since I, uh, the points that you've hit, I agree with wholeheartedly, the family, the community, the power, um, and what I'm really grateful for is the leadership, especially in these times. And having not just the Bill of Rights, but the statement that Carrie made, um, you know, early, early on around everything that is happening in our country. Um, you know, the, we, we need leadership. And so I think that's one of the things that I'm really tremendously grateful for is that this is an organization of leaders. This is an organization of people who are passionate, um, beyond passionate about education for our kids, but also um, for all kids and for changing the world. So uh, it's just such an honor to be here. And I'm sorry that I'm late, but I, I could not not be with you guys. Amen. And uh, I'll pass it on to Christina. Has Christina spoken? No. Nope. Christina, I gotta go with my homie. From hey. the <laughs> uh, so I thank you and so you know I'm so glad to be here happy Friday everybody um, I have some special guests tweeting in the background so if you hear the birds <laughs> they want to talk to I'm telling you we got to do a for the bird show you know <laughs> That's what I keep looking like okay you know I, I was in spaces, um, just trying to do the best that I could advocating for children. Um, and what I noticed is that everybody had representation, everybody had a union, you know, um, and the parents and the kids didn't, um, you know, and parents were allowed to form committees up to a point, right? They were heavily monopolized, the stakeholders were monopolized, they only got so much done and it was taking years. And I, and I was looking at the data, like we do not have this much time. We don't. Our kids 
are suffering and they're depending on us. Um, and, you know, just looking at the discriminatory racist practices that happen particularly here in Riverside County, um, and we're allowed to continue to happen. Uh, a lot of elected officials know about it. Um, the police, you know, sheriff's department knows about it. You know, I took it all the way. Um, and I did a lot of that without any backing. Um, and that gets a little bit frustrating, but you keep fighting because you know the kids are affected, right? Um, so when I found this beautiful family, I just cannot, I, I, there's no going back for me, right? Because now I know that I have that support. Um, there are people across this nation that feel the same way. Like we care about your children. Um, we care um, about what's happening to them. We care with a matter and a sense of urgency um we're not trying to wait you know we don't want to wait we've waited long enough um and so having this parents union is amazing and i just admonish all all of you that are watching to start somewhere right whether it's reaching out to us for help or whatever that may be you can be your community's uh watch person over the children they need it. Trust me, they do. Um, and so I'm just amazed and I just love all of you guys. And I pass it to Vivette. Greetings, everyone. Greetings from New York. I went to bed last night with all of your beautiful faces on my mind and I get the honor of being here again with you this morning. And it really is an honor. I just don't throw words around like that loosely. I am very selective in the places and spaces where I go, definitely where I lend my talents to. I don't have time to waste. I do not want to be involved with organizations that are just putting on a show. And I can assure you that the National Parents Union is none of those things. I wanna put things into context for the viewers a little bit about how I became a part of the National Parents Union. It began, first of all, I believe the National Parents Union that really God led me here, that this is part of my divine journey, who I am and my desires of my heart that I've put forward, that I'm being led here. Uh, I met Kerry Rodriguez a couple years ago. I had heard and read a lot about her and her work. And I said, wow, this little lady, like there's something about her that I like, like, yo, she's about it. And I like that. I like, like, don't just talk, too much talking. And I saw her doing, and I felt very connected to you, Carrie, because even before you knew me, I was standing up for you. Like, stop talking about her, leave her alone. Y'all always have stuff to say when somebody's doing something good, back up off of her. And I had the opportunity to go to a convening in Chicago now, at that time, uh, my husband was incarcerated. I, didn't, I was homeless. I had no money, really, to, to speak of. I was promised, you know, you have airfare and you have a place to stay at a hotel. And I went to Chicago with $10 in my pocket. I told my husband, he thought I was crazy. He said, how are you going to go? What if you need something? I said, it's OK, I'm provided for. I know who I am and I know whose I am and I know I'm being led here, so I'm going. When I went to that convening, I met La Comadre and I met Carrie in person. And we spoke, we hit it off. And Carrie said, Vivette, I've been reading your work too. At the time I was blogging very heavily, like two blogs a week. And she said, I'd like you to write a blog for me and I'll pay you for it. I said, okay, thank you. She said, no, I said, well, I'll get it to you when we started to work things out. She's like, no, 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 I'll pay you now. You increase my portion tenfold. She gave me a hundred dollar bill right there for my work. Are y'all hearing this? I went with $10 in my pocket and through this woman that I was led there to go, I met her and she poured into my cup. Fast forward now, after that we didn't, I wrote the, you know, blog and that was it. Now here I was, this December, I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw this ad for National Parents Union. And I was like, oh, what's that? that that's interesting uh, because a lot, I'm a teacher. And so a lot of the parent spaces that I'm in, 
not to put down anyone at all, but I know one common thread I noticed that never resonated with me was that you're in a union, but the parents, they are really only vying for their children. <laughs> They're the parents' children that are usually doing well in school, that are, you know, on top of things. Their parents have the time to be there. And the PTA mom's kids get all of the perks. And that was usually the dynamic. So I said, well, I'm curious. I kind of want to infiltrate this space and see what this is about. I inquired and I got a call back. And who was it that called me? Carrie Rodriguez. I said, well, we meet again. Here we go. I went to Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen watch, watching, when I tell you this is a community of like-minded individuals who are fighting for all children, all children. Some people here don't even have children. My children are grown. It's my, today's my daughter's 21st birthday. They're grown, right? So for many you know, it's not, it's not for our own, but it's as Christina said, be the watcher for all the kids, not just in your community, around the nation. And I would go so far as to say around the world. Parents, this is your responsibility. And National Parents Union takes this responsibility very seriously. And I like it. I like the work we're doing. Sometimes I'm tired but I'm invigorated by this work because it's real and everyone's doing it from Philly to Oklahoma to Houston, come back around to Michigan, go to California, Boston, we're everywhere. Yo, this, you need to get with National Parents Union, honestly. If you're not signed up, if you're not linked up, National Parents Union, get with us. We're here to help you. I'm here to help you. Everyone here is here to help you because we need each other. Thank you so much. And every time I'm here, I just feel fired up. I feel good in my spirit. And I can't say I felt that way these past few days. Look around. It's not all black. It's not all white. It's not all Latinx. It's, that's community. That's what it looks like. Thank you. <laughs> Love y'all. Y'all are so bomb, y'all. The best. <laughs> you pick next. Love you. Oh, who's next? Everybody went? Who didn't go? Well, I, I, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, we, we've talked a lot at our union meetings about the, the, the murder of, of George Floyd. This is nothing new, racism is nothing new, but all of a sudden it's on the front page every day. Every day, um, I, I noticed today actually when I go on CNN.com, it's not, you know, and that's one thing that concerns me, that as the, the protests are peaceful um, and they get less coverage, that, that people forget about what's going on in society. And, and, and anyone can answer this. Um, wh what do we do to, 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 to continue this awareness, to keep this work going so that people don't forget the racism? Go ahead, Bernita. Yeah, so um, i like to backtrack a little bit to January uh, when I was at the conference with you guys, right? I'm, I'm similar story, didn't know what I was coming for. I'm just like, Carrie called, I'm like, yes, I'm there, right? I'm there. and sitting in that room, my daughter has never been policed in school, ever, ever. Um, she's had a lot of issues going on in school, but she's never actually had the police called on her in school. And I sat in that convening and got a call that they were literally about to detain my daughter for having a cell phone mm -hmm. that she was using to study her midterms. And she explain to the teacher, long story short, I was wearing this very shirt at the moment when they called me, black kids deserve education, not incarceration. We were, we were riled up about, about to walk through the streets of New Orleans and I'm getting a phone call while I'm in this rally saying, 
oh, we're about to call the police on your daughter. And I'm like, like, surely I'm being punked. Like, surely what, what? Okay, really back. I got a bad tongue. So, um, like, in that moment, I went into panic mode as a mother. I'm in New Orleans. My daughter's in, in Detroit. And she doesn't even go to school in Detroit. She goes out of school in Detroit because of all the problems we've had in Detroit. But never once has my daughter had the police called on her, as many kids that I know who have. And everybody I'm calling at the time is like, Victoria, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you? And I'm like trying to get somebody to my daughter, right? And they're like, either you come and get her or we're going to detain her. And when you get here, she'll be with the police or she'll be with public safety. I said all that to say it was divine order for me to be in the midst of the people I was in the midst of in that moment. I suddenly looked around. I remember yelling to the top of my lungs in a corner as quietly as I can, threatening them that if you call the police on my daughter, I'm bringing it to you when I get back. I want you to know I am. Didn't know what I was bringing to them, but didn't realize I was bringing them y'all, right? Immediately when I got back, Christina Laster, well, while I was there, Christina and Marisol came to my defense, like just on so much. They saw my face, right? And Christina told me, nope, call me. I got this. When I say within two, three weeks of me getting back, Christina had those people in a meeting, not even understand, they were discombobulated. They didn't know what to say. <laughs> they didn't know how to say it. They were like, um, um, hold on. Um, so a, an attorney text back, I mean, uh, emailed back. They were like, well, we've conferred with our attorney. I don't care. And Christina called me on the way. I was, I was so hyped. I was irate because I defend children all day, every day and defend education, but I didn't know what to do for my own child. I was broken and I was tired, but my baby, Christina called me. Marisol said so many encouraging words to me in that moment. And I said, this is nothing but God. Like who knew this was gonna happen and I would be in this place wearing this shirt, yelling in New Orleans about you don't get to police our kids. And before it was over with, when I say Christina shut them down so many times in meetings, and she shut me down a couple of times. She was like, nope, I'm gonna need you to shut up because you, you <laughs> have that emotion. Right now. I'm gonna need you to calm down and let me handle this. And she listened. And to see that we have this collective body that parent, I can call on for any parents. And I'm gonna tell you, since, I've had a similar incident and I played Christina. I was like, let me tell y'all, this is what's not going to happen. <laughs> so we learn it from one another. It's been six months and we've started, a, we've gone through a pandemic together and I feel like I've known y'all forever. So this, this work is so detrimental to black communities because this is where it starts. You police our babies. You prepare them for incarceration. You prepare them to be gunned down in streets and knees and backs and black bodies to fall. And this group being together is like helping us get through this and helping us understand that we have a space and we have a voice. And this, it doesn't have to be this voice of somebody who's, who's got all this political ranking. It's us, it's parents who are saying no more and we're saying it together. Thanks, Bernadette. And you know, if I want to, if I want to say what the National Parents Union means to me, you know, I had a conversation with my son last night, who's eight years old, about race and 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 his privilege. Um, that you know, it's just realizing, forty two years of age, you know, you go through this life, <clears throat> what I would call passive um, passive advocacy. You know, thinking everyone's telling your kid everyone's equal. But the conversation I had last night with my kid, um, I never would have had about his privilege and how to treat people and how to stand up for people. Um, I never would have had that if I hadn't experienced the, the, the love that I experienced from all of you in New Orleans or that we experienced on Thursday night, you know? Um, because again, it's, it's, I wish more people that, that are filled with hate um, could get out of their bubble and, 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 and meet people 
like we have on this on this council. Because when you see your friends suffering or you see your friends crying on a Thursday night, um, it, it, it gets you out of yourself. And you can't just sit by anymore and just say, just be a good guy, you know? Just be a good guy and, and treat everyone equally. That's not good enough anymore. You really have to dig down. And, and I know for me to plant that seed as, as, as quickly as possible. So just thanks to all of you. I want to, you know, just um, say that I was watching um, the George Floyd Memorial Service yesterday, and I was really touched by um, what Reverend Al Sharpton was saying, because it wasn't a comfortable speech, uh, it was necessary, right? Um, and, you know, he's like, we, what George was saying, what we saw, we all been saying those, this whole time, but this uh, racism, um, and discrimination, um, inequities, um, and, you know, just justice malpractices, criminal, whatever you want to call it, are so embedded in the foundation um, in every institution in America that I think what tends to happen is that there's always an apology, there's always a, you know, we gonna do better, but they're not really willing to unravel the system in such a way to make that possible. So it only becomes a surface level touch. And that's why you wake up a week later and you see, oh, now we're talking about, you know, uh, the birds that flew south and some didn't go, some stayed north, you know? And, and it's like, you know, what is it gonna take what is it going to take? Okay, uh, we don't know, and and we know what it takes, but we don't have all of the power and authority to be able to do that. It's going to require, and I'm glad the world joined in because the world is filled with color. The world is filled with color. I don't care about the narrative that you see. If you watch a UNICEF episode, you're going to realize really quickly you've been hoodwinked and lied to here in America about the world being filled with color or not. And so we cannot sit in um, from a place of domination anymore, right? That That's apparent in, in America is what is apparent. I'm, I don't sit in a place of domination just based on my skin color. But if I went somewhere else internationally, they would look at me as, you know, something else. And so we have to be willing to say that there's things, systems, institutions that have to be unraveled. Now, that's going to be difficult because some of those institutions were embedded with the economy, right? It was economically based and fueled to oppress people, right? Um, and so I'm really just um, in this space of don't tell me sorry. You've been telling my grandparents sorry. And I don't want you to tell my son sorry. Do something different. Stop talking and act. Stop talking and act. And no matter how hard that is, do it. And Bernita, thank you so much. You know, everybody know I got your back and I could talk about this all day, but I'm gonna let somebody else go. <laughs> I wanna I wanna throw it to Kelly Williams Bilar, who's joining us now from Ohio, another one of our states. <clears throat> tremendous leader. Uh, we honored her down in New Orleans because so often, I, I got to tell you, um, one of the most powerful things for me, one of the most powerful moments um, was being able to stand with Kelly, with Hamlet, with Coolia, uh, with Gwen Samuels. It, I mean, parents are on the front lines doing this work, showing leadership. We're always called in uh, when other folks can't get it done because we're the constituents, we're the consumers, we're the leaders, we're all of these things and you can't do it without us, but we're never recognized uh, for that extraordinary work that it's necessary. That this, that none of this work about reforming systems happens without parents and families standing up. And, you know, I, I remember standing there on the stage uh, with Coolia just crying my eyes out just because you know, here is a woman who does extraordinary work every single day. And she said, I have never been rec recognized for my work in 20 years. And you think about it. Kelly is another woman who sacrificed everything on the line to end up for what was right for her children, lost her father in the process, stories that, you know, that they use her story all the time as an example, but it's convenient. 
But this is a woman who's doing work in the community, doing work with parents, who is speaking her truth to try to lead us down a path that, that hasn't been forged. We're figuring it out as we go. Um, and mm -hmm. Kelly, I, that's why I'm so grateful that you're you're here with us and you're in our circle and you're part of our council. So I want to I want to throw it to you so you have some time to speak here. Carrie and Tim, you know, I'm so grateful. Okay, and I'm totally honored to be able to to do work, to get out there, to get my hands dirty. Because how passionate I've always been, and to be able to connect with you and everyone else, this is amazing. I tell people all the time, you you need to look into National Parents Union. I don't, I'm not just doing this for my health. I'm doing this to change things, to absolutely change laws and opportunities and give people like me a chance, give our children a chance. And I'm so grateful to be here right now. And I mean, I just got a text from Natasha saying, you want to jump on? I'm like, okay, <laughs> but I totally, I just got myself together this morning. I'm like, whatever, I need to get on here and see what everybody's talking about, you know, because I'm passionate about it. And I just love you guys. And I look forward to talking every single Thursday, um, connecting and finding out what we need to do to push forward um, in, in every, every aspect of what we're doing. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to even, you know, say that this morning. So thank you both. Thank you for being a prom queen in That's New Orleans, nice. by the way. Yeah. yeah, and that too. Oh my gosh. I got that all <laughs> on my social media. Like I was, I was, that night was so amazing because like I said, I, I okay. So yeah, I, I did not go to prom. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> prom was so running sweet. around Canal Street trying to get you a tiara. I'm not. Did, where, see, I didn't know that. All I know, I looked up and I had one for me. It was so sweet. I'm like, oh my God. I just, I couldn't, I was just bawling that whole night. It was so beautiful. You guys are beautiful, wonderful people. And I'm just so blessed. You don't understand how blessed I am to connect with you. And then on top of that, you, you give us all an opportunity to talk and talk to, and connect with other people out here every day. I, you know, we, we, we have our great producers. I can't forget you guys, you guys are wonderful. And then, and then we have opportunities to, to talk to moms and dads and, and people that are, you know, administrators and teachers and, you know, professors and psychologists and psychiatrists, and we need them all, you know, I do anyway, <laughs> to get inside the psyche to see what's going on out here in this world. Um, and so, just in that in itself, you guys give us so much opportunity. I'm so happy to be a part of every inch of the National Parents Union. So thank you, thank you all. Kelly, we're so grateful for you. And, and I, I just wanna say, right, it's extraordinary to have this wonderful family meeting um, and to talk about how wonderful this connection is, uh, how wonderful this organization is. I, I think it's great, but y'all know me too. I, I don't like to just talk about it. I like to be about it. This is a union that is not just talking about the things we want to do. We are putting our, our money where our mouth is and we're doing the work. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be calling on y'all uh, to come into this family meeting uh, to talk about the work of this union, because we're not just, you know, a bunch of hens sitting around clucking. Uh, we are putting the work in the field. Uh, our education committee uh, Vivette, you are leading that extraordinary work. That's where the Bill of Rights came from. Everybody's talking, coming to us saying, where did that Bill of Rights come from? It came from all of us collectively mm -hmm. sitting together, uh, you know, dumping our brains on a piece of paper, dissecting it, doing the research, arguing, talking yeah. about it, going back and forth, hours of work uh, of parent leaders across the country coming together. I'm thinking about Bernita leading our, our conversations about health justice and what that needs to look like for our families. Uh, you know, whether it comes to, should we have testing? Should we have vaccination? How is that gonna be rolled out? How are parents gonna be a part of the conversation around health justice? Uh, because we cannot reemerge from right. this situation until we, we know that there is health and safety for our families and for too, too often, uh, we're not a part of that conversation. We, we have policies implemented on us and to us, not with us. And Bernita leading that work and, 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 and bringing us all together around what's right and what's just incredibly, incredibly important. And then Maritza and Kulia leading our work along with Tafshir uh, in New Jersey, coming together around how we are going to get every single family in America to vote. 
That is going to be our crusade. We're not going to sit around just talking about mm -hmm. it. We're going to be about it. We're going to put our best plans into the streets. We're going to be connecting all 50 states, uh, D.C., Puerto Rico. Everybody is on the team. Every family in America that we touch, we are getting them out because this family votes, your families vote. We need to spread this message that and if we are really going to have change, we got to show up, we got to participate, and we got to make the change happen. So over the next couple of weeks, the work of this union is going to be putting these campaigns out there. Uh, not just talking about it. We need the hugs. We need the loves. We need the safe space, but we need the action. Mm -hmm. And from this, this collective power we are building by having this space, we are going to launch incredible work across this country that is going to change things for families uh, across this nation. And I'm so proud to be here with, uh, with you guys. I'm so proud of you guys leading this work. Uh, we believe in the power of parents. That's what the National Parents Union is about. Uh, we, we don't need to tell you what to do. Y'all are grown folks mm -hmm. leading powerful organizations. We are, we are not telling you how to run your organizations. We're not telling you how to run your communities. We're saying, what have you figured out that works? Let's share it across the country so more parents can get on board. Uh, because you guys are the leaders. You guys are the ones we have been waiting for. Uh, and all we need to do is get together, share our best practices, share our resources with one another so that we can launch this thing and bring people together around real change, something that's substantive, something we can touch, we can see, we can feel, we can move people to action. And you guys are already doing this work and I, I couldn't be more proud of you guys. So thank y'all for being here this morning. Thank you for sharing your time. Uh, I'm gonna ask all of you, you're gonna be coming on here to talk about these campaigns. Can't just talk about it. We got to put this this plan in mm -hmm. motion, That's right. and we're going to do it all together. So, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Happy Friday. Yes. Happy Friday, guys. Thank, thank you very much. We can relate. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. This morning, um, this is what collective action looks like. This is what co-creation looks like. Yep. This is what our family looks like. Um, we do everything by by vote. We do right. everything collectively uh, and we, we share with one another. And so I'm just so grateful that uh, so many of you have been able to come and, and see what we're all about. That's right. uh, if you'd like to join us, you know, hit us up in the comments saying, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I want to be a part of these right. folks. We got a space for you too. Or email um, us at info at mpunion.org. That's right. Uh, we're, we're excited to have you along with us and, and to help us spread the word. If you're excited about getting voting, uh, to happen in fam with families in your community. We need your help. We are signing you up. Uh, and boy, do we have some extraordinary ladies leading that work. We want to get in on this right now. That's right. Every family votes. Stay tuned for it. Thanks for joining have us. Have a nice day, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Have a great weekend.